Hello everyone, welcome to Relationship Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Parker and I am your host. And today we're gonna pick up on our communication series. Uh, today we'll be, we will be talking about non-verbal communication. Um, some people like to call this body language. That's the type of communication we're gonna be talking about today. And we're gonna be introducing our ultimate role oral sex dice. Um, these are a little bit different. They have four different dice. It's a bunch of different ways that we could use them, but I will save this um, until the end of the show. So if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so now. It's greatly appreciated. If you have not liked this video, like the video. It don't cost you nothing, just like it. Just like the video, and if you don't like it, click dislike because I, I want honest feedback. That is what helps me to become better. Um, and just so you can know about me and the store, my website is below if you wanna read about me, my bio, all of that is on my website. My Instagram is listed at only one PPG. And if you like this video so much that it blessed your soul and you wanna send me a tip, my cash app is on there as well. So we are gonna get started. Um, Nonverbal communication, I do have my notes, but nonverbal communication is basically when we translate information through our body language. Now, some people seem to say that they feel like nonverbal communication is more accurate than verbal communication because a lot of times people say, well, your mouth can say anything, but your body language is what's really telling me how you really, really feel. And some people have those faces Whereas when people talking to them and they face get them, you know, they ain't got to say nothing. Their face says it all or their posture says it all. Um, or if they're kind of withdrawn, it says it all. So our body language can say a whole lot. So I'm just going to read what it says. Um, it's the transmission of message or signals through a nonverbal platform such as eye contact facial expression, gestures, posture, body language. Um, Nonverbal communication is, um, for me, it's, it's kind of like a blessing and a curse in so many words. Because when I have this thing where I, I, I consider myself practicing, Self-control, is it means that I'm consciously thinking on making sure, don't say anything. Making sure, you know, make sure you're looking at them. In other words, it's like I'm thinking my way through it. So it almost may seem as though I'm zoned out. And it's not that I'm zoned out. It's actually that I'm trying to make sure that I'm taking everything in. I'm trying to make sure that I'm not cutting you off. I'm trying to make sure that... um that I'm, I'm giving you um, respect by looking into your eyes and certain things like that. And, and it's almost like some people like myself, it comes off as this blank look as if you done literally checked out of the conversation and it's not that, it's that you're thinking your way through the conversation, okay? So for some people, you have to know the person that you're dealing with so that you can make sure you're processing the information correctly. Now, another thing about nonverbal communication is um, the person on the other end, the way they comprehend it. For example, sometimes people say, why you got an attitude? Now you ain't said nothing. First say, why you got an attitude? And you saying, I don't have an attitude. And sometimes you really don't have an attitude. It's just that you don't have this, um, this happiness or this joy or, or, you know, this certain look across your face. It's almost just like you just kind of in a moment. But you don't have a, a attitude, but for the person who's looking at you, the way they comprehended it is you have an attitude, okay? Um, and we already talked about facial expression. Another thing is movement, okay? I'm one of those people, I talk with my hands. So a lot of times when I'm talking, I'm talking with my hands. Some people, when they talk with their hands, they're overly animated. And sometimes the things you do with your hands can be very offensive. For example, when you talking and you doing this, that's almost like a cue of it's up and it's stuck. Like we is it we is going there. Or 
this new thing that I've been seeing the, the younger girls do when they talk, they, they, they doing this too with their nails, making them clack. And mine ain't really long, but they make them clack. And it's kind of like this sassy type of way. The other person on the other end could be very offended by all of that. Mm -hmm. Or another thing that you could do is like you sitting back and you listen to the conversation. You sit back and you do something like this. That to people can mean, you know, you offended. It means that you guard it. It means that you didn't put your defense up. So the thing about nonverbal communication is the way you moving and acting in that moment lets the person know how you receiving the information that they're giving you. So the thing is, you want to make sure that you always, um, especially if you're dealing with your spouse, when they're talking, you want to always at least be receptive and hear what they got to say and at least hear them out. Because you don't want them to feel as though they're talking and everything they're saying is kind of going in and out all at the same time. In other words, like you really not being respectful and considering their point of view. Because I always tell people, especially when I'm doing my sessions, I got your story, I got his story, and then the truth is up in there. Okay? So the thing about it is you hearing things from people's perspective. Okay? And one little thing you do will basically change their whole perspective. All right. Um, you want to be careful about gestures. Okay. Um, when I was younger, children used to tease and they used to stick their tongue out. It's nonverbal. It's a gesture. Another thing people used to do is flip you off. Nonverbal. It's a gesture. And I'm talking about this, and I know they all like, you know what? This sounds so elementary, so petty, so kitty. But you would be surprised at how many people actually do stuff like that. Flip each other off and stick their tongue out at each other. And purposely roll their eyes at each other. All kind of stuff. Grown people do this. Stump their feet. All kind of stuff grown people do. Because they don't know how to express themselves. Okay, eye contact, this is big. I was always told, especially being that I was a criminal justice major, that a lot of times you um, you pay attention to people and you pay attention to their eye contact. And a lot of times when people talking to you and they can't look you in the face and so they keep looking off or they keep looking down, most times that is a sign that they're not being truthful about what they're saying or some type of discomfort about what they're saying especially when they cannot look you in your eyes. And another thing is, I can't remember, but if you ask a person a question, I want to say if you look to the right, I'm, I have to go back through my notes in school, but if you look through the right, it's like it's basically triggering a certain part of your mind. One part triggers facts. The other way you look triggers imagination. So even tell if a person is actually telling the truth or they're lying by what they're doing with their eyes, Okay. Another thing is touch. Sometimes when people are communicating, they like reach and touch. And what happens if a person reaches and touch and you do that? Yeah. In other words, that's letting you know, don't touch me. We, ain't, I ain't all right. I'm not in a good place. Yeah, all of that is nonverbal communication. You ain't got to say nothing. Your actions are going to say everything that needs to be said. Okay. And then space. Sometimes when people talking, you'll see what somebody will actually take a step back or a step to the side or just kind of move a little bit because they may feel like the person is in their personal space or taking a step back or, you know, y'all know what I'm saying. When you completely kind of remove yourself in so many words, that kind of lets a person know that you're not receptive to what they're saying as well. Okay. So that is going to be our nonverbal communication. The next thing we're going to talk about is uh, written and text uh, forms of communication. And the last thing I said, I wasn't going to do it, but I am going to do it because visual is another uh, type of communication. And I'm only doing visual because this generation of people love emojis. 
They love memes. They love putting all of this stuff out there to kind of say what they don't want to say, but it says it so it kind of gets the point across. So I am going to get off into visual as well. So let's get into these dice. All right. So this dice has an action dice, and the action dice has lick or suck, fondle or tickle, nibble or bite, stroke or rub, tease, squeeze, or your choice. Then there's a body part dice, and it says head or clit, meaning the, the dickhead, penis head, okay? Vaginal or anal, butt or balls, his or her choice, rim or lips, all over or inside. Okay, I'm liking this. See, I hadn't even, this, these are new dice. I hadn't even used these yet, but that all over inside one kind of got my attention. Okay, this these dice also allow you to introduce props. Feather or fingertips, ice cubes or popsicles, edible lube or chocolate, dildo or vibrator. It is a difference. A dildo does not take batteries. Vibrators actually take batteries. So that means one actually moves and the other one doesn't, okay? Whip paddle or blindfold, honey or hot wax. Now, let me tell you what the fun props, what I kind of like about this is, Sometimes people may not have hot wax, but most people have honey in their cabinet. Um, some people may not have edible lube, but they have some type of body, some type of sweetener uh, in their cabinet, like maybe chocolate syrup or some type of jelly. Um, just something, you know, with some flavor to it. Maybe some whipped cream, something like that. The last dice is where and what position? Where and what position? Okay, so we have kitchen or dining room, standing in the living room or family room, sitting in the bathroom or shower, 69 in a spare or master bedroom, on knees in the garage or the car. Oh yeah, that means it's getting you outside of the house. And another one that says standing on the stairs or in the hallway. Okay. Hmm. Well, I would just recommend that if you decide to get these dice that you kind of do a little planning ahead and make sure you have some different things like massage oils, make sure you have some lube, make sure you have like a blindfold. Most times if you done bought something from me, especially from the fetish line, they gave you a blindfold for free. So make sure you have like your little blindfold, your little feather, like different little stuff that you see on here. Make sure you kind of have this stuff because that is what makes it fun when you actually have all of the different stuff that you could utilize to actually play uh, the, the game. All right. So this again is the ultimate roll oral sex dice. So these are the new oral sex dice that just came out. They will be on the website. I hope you all enjoyed the video. I want you to like, share, and subscribe. Um, as you can see, the rain has stopped. I actually came up here to do the video because in the back where the warehouse is in the store, the roof is like a tin roof. So when it's raining, it's like really, really loud. Um, and I didn't want to like, um, have that as a distraction during the video. So I decided to come up to the sales floor and do the video. So with that being said, you all be blessed. You all enjoy the rest of your day. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And thank you all for the support. And I hope you all are getting the emails. I'm actually writing the emails now. I had, um, I have a lady who handles, you know, my email blast and all of that. But at one point, my emails, they kind of look so generic to me. Meaning that it looked like a Macy's or a Sears or, or whatever. Like, it just didn't have that personal Sharonda Parker touch. So what I did was say, you know what? Let me get in this let, let me get into this with these emails because if you know me i'm not a technical person i say you deal to all day long but i don't be liking to deal with your computers and your wi-fi and your connections and all of that kind of stuff so you know i'm i'm growing too i'm growing too so you know y'all work with me work with me help yank t out <laughs> like share and subscribe be blessed